Let's touch base on the deferred sales trust, right? Would you call DST for short? Why and how and when do we use it? Um, if you give us like, you know, like a couple of steps on that. Sure. Yeah, let's start with kind of the big picture of what's going on. This is kind of the why behind behind why it's such a popular strategy now. So according to the American Bankers Association, about $17 trillion will pass from one generation to the next in the next 20 years. Wow. And this is the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet. Okay. And in fact, there's about 77 million baby boomers in the U.S. alone. And about 10 million of them are turning 65. I'm sorry, 10,000 of them are turning 65 every day. Mm -hmm. And they're faced with this large wealth that they've accumulated. And most of this is in primary homes, commercial real estate, and private equity. In fact, that's 50% of America's net worth right there. The other 50% is, is, is stocks, bonds, mutual funds, retirement accounts, pensions. But 50% is in what's called illiquid assets that take management, that take time, liability, oftentimes have debt. And they're looking to retire from the toilets, the trash, the liability. Right. And they're looking to transfer it to their, to their kids and retire rather than just holding on. Um, a lot of our clients, they find us and they say, Brett, I might f uh, feel real estate rich and cash flow poor. Um, I might, you know, it could be a primary home. It could be their business. I want to retire from my dental practice, for my uh, um, orthodontist or, or uh, optometrist or a veterinarian or someone who has a professional practice and they're ready to retire, but they're faced with a very low basis and a very high gain and of which 30 to 50 percent is going to be wiped out. So a lot of them are very reluctant to sell and mm. don't have a good quality tax deferral strategy to use. So, for example, our primary homeowner, you have a, what's called a 121 exclusion, which gives you 250,000 for the if you live there two of the last five years, if you're single or five hundred thousand dollars if you're married. So uh, a gain that's tax free. Right. But beyond that, you owe capital gains tax, and that's where we come in. So we just did a deal for, for a, a lady who was selling a $3 million home in Cupertino. This is near Apple, and she bought it over 20 years ago and highly appreciated, and we saved her $400,000 in tax. So it's not just the numbers that we save her, but really what for her, she wanted an income stream mm -hmm. where she could sell her house that she was living in. She kind of felt trapped. The kids were gone, and she, she didn't want to get – hammered with the tax. So she, so she was able to sell it and put it to the deferred sales trust and get a passive income stream. She can put it into commercial real estate or, or a business, which right now she has it in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. But the point is, instead of paying that 400000 it's all deferred and she's earning interest. So the second one would be the business owner. Again, they're just selling a business. They have no 1031 option, just like the primary owner has no 1031 option. Okay. So those two are probably our top people who would use it because it's, it's truly, we think the best option for them, um, uh, all things considered. Now, the, the investment real estate owner, he has the 1031 exchange. We talked about some of the limitations there. And let's, let's dive into those a little bit more sure. for your listeners who are in the real estate business. So first one is the 45-180 sprint. So the intent is to give tax deferral, and the intent is to, to find real estate but the problem is it's very low inventory and prices are very high. So when you add a time frame to that 45 days to identify and 180 days to close, it often pre presents or creates pressure and stress and people often overpay for properties that they otherwise wouldn't have bought if it wasn't for that tax deferral, right? So that's the key. Our parents taught us to sell high and buy low. Right. They didn't teach us to sell high and then buy higher again. And unfortunately, that's what the 1031 often does. You sell it today, and then 180 days later, you're buying higher. And oh, by the way, sometimes with a higher interest rate. So we call that the candle burning at both ends. And if the candle represents your return, eventually if the candle burns enough on both ends, your return gets smaller and smaller. Right, so right. the one side that's burning is low inventory, high prices, low cap rates, right? Which is not good. It's a high price. The other candle that's burning is your time is running out, right? You're running out of time. And so this all creates this pressure situation where oftentimes in a highly appreciated market, you overpay. So that's where we would say, don't use a 1031 exchange if you're going to overpay. Make sure you're buying the real estate based upon the intrinsic value of the real estate. 
uh, uh, regardless of what tax deferral you have. And if for some reason you feel like you're just buying it because of the tax deferral, then we would say the deferred sales trust now becomes the number one reason to use it in a highly appreciated market. So that's number one. Number two is the new depreciation schedule, okay? So depreciation is one of the top reasons to own investment real estate. It offsets the income that's coming in, so you have a lower tax bill. It's, it's fantastic, right? However, with the 1031 exchange, if you own long enough, you eventually will deplete your depreciation and then if you do a 1031, it tr that depreciation schedule travels, which is not good, mm -hmm. meaning you don't have as much depreciation for the next deal. So the intent is to get as much depreciation as you can. The problem is the 1031 exchange, the depreciation schedule travels. The solution is the deferred sales trust. You can put the funds into the trust and then purchase investment real estate through the trust and have a brand new depreciation schedule. So let's walk through a deal. So yeah. let's just say... Um, you're selling a deal, Willie, and it's a million dollars and you've owned it for 27 and a half years. So you have a zero, zero basis. If you were to sell today and buy a 1031 deal of exactly, let's say 3 million, you would only have $2 million worth of depreciation because that other million you've already used. Okay. With the deferred sales trust, if you bought that same $3 million deal, you'd have a full $3 million depreciation schedule because it's not a 1031. We're buying it through the trust. Okay. Mm. And here's the last one on the 1031, and then I'll open up for some more questions or thoughts that you have. Here, yeah, yeah, please. Is, is the fact that you have to produce or you have to buy something of equal or greater value with the 1031. That's part of the rules. So what that often means is you're taking on equal or greater debt, right? And when you take on debt, debt can be very, very risky in a highly appreciated market. So uh, let's just say you're selling a $5 million deal and you had two and a half million in debt, you need to buy something of at least five million or greater, which means you're probably going to take on that two and a half or more in debt. But let's just say you buy a $6 million deal. Now you're three and a half million dollars in debt. Right. But the only reason you're buying that again is because you feel pressure to overpay and you don't want to pay the tax. Into the deferred sales trust, we can sell, pay off all the debt at closing, just put that two and a half into the trust. Now you're debt free. And we like to say you're on the sidelines and you're in a position to purchase something at optimal timing, meaning when when you find that deal, right, which could be tomorrow, day 181 or five years from now, but hopefully you found a deal that makes sense on the intrinsic value, not just because you want it to defer the tax. You have just listened to another information-packed episode of Capital Gains Tax Solutions with Brett Swartz. We hope you enjoyed today's show and found it helpful. Visit CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com to access the show notes and to access more resources. Don't forget to leave a review and join us again next time.